Hola a todos, my name is Maria Fernanda Perez and I'm a program assistant here at the Adrian Arch Latin America Center. Today, as a Costa Rican, I am beyond thrilled to be welcoming President Laura Chinchilla Miranda, um, who was the 46th president of Costa Rica, first female president to ever hold that position in the office. President Chinchilla, thank you so much for being here with me today. No, thank you. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. It is a pleasure for me to have this conversation with you. Great. I want to kick off the conversation on a more personal note, which is your tenure um, as the first female president of Costa Rica, hopefully the first of many more to come. <laughs> I hope so. Um, the world seems to always turn its side towards Latin America when it comes to female leadership. In your opinion, what has enabled so many women, although never enough, to reach the highest echelons of pu public office? In Latin America, you Latin mean? America. Uh, yes. Uh, first, we have to recognize that uh, this is a very important uh, fact. Uh, we have been able uh, to um, uh, to uh, to elect uh, about six uh, women in the whole region during the last years, uh, and that is that is amazing as compared with other regions in the world. A and I will say that. It is even more surprising uh, when you analyze uh, the macho culture in Latin America. So why we have been able to achieve this amazing, um, this amazing goal of uh, uh, having women uh, presidents in the region? I would say that the most important uh, uh, factor uh, that explains uh, this, this situation has to do with um, affirmative action policies. Now we have in place, in most of the countries, uh, affirmative action legislation, which calls for a high participation of women into politics. I will say that that was the first and probably the most important step we, uh, we, uh, we made and that derived in more women participating in politics. That's great. Um, the second topic that I want to touch upon is the Pacific Alliance. Your administration was very forward-looking in pushing for Costa Rica to take the next step from being an observer country to a full member. Um, and I think we're close to having an official response about this. But, you know, what, what is, what's in it for Costa Rica and how is the Pacific Alliance a different regional integration effort than many of the others we've seen in Central America but in the region more broadly? The Pacific, uh, the Pacific Alliance is uh, the continuation of uh, our policies. And uh, since Costa Rica is a very small economy, uh, but we have been able to invest in human uh, development, we have the possibility of being very competitive mm -hmm. um, whenever we uh, can enter uh, into enter any uh, market in the world. And the Pacific Alliance is a wonderful vehicle uh, for continue promoting uh, free trade, not only within our countries in Latin America, but beyond that. Um, now, on the issue of the Pacific Alliance itself, uh, I consider it as an example of, of successful integration in Latin America. Because when you compare the Pacific Alliance with, for example, uh, the um, Mercosur, what you find is that in Mercosur, in a certain way, they have been more concerned uh, about ideology, about doctrines, uh, about um, you know, a kind of political discourse trying to uh, pointing out who is the responsible for our problems. In the case of the Pacific Alliance, what you find is a group of countries, a group of nations that are trying to resolve the problems by their own, uh, are trying to coordinate their policies, try to open uh, their frontiers, not only uh, for goods, services, but also for people uh, and for, of course, capital. But also, they have been very successful in terms of uh, sharing more cooperation in education, in health, uh, in 
promoting uh, small uh, businesses. Mm -hmm. So they, in a very short period of time, they have been able to achieve an amazing, amazing amount of results, very concrete results. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think um, it is a wonderful platform that we have there. Um, and finally, at the same time, it is a platform that encourages uh, very important values like not only free trade, but also the strengthening of the rule of law, uh, democracy, and freedom. Yeah, the Pacific Lion certainly is very pragmatic. A very pragmatic approach. Yeah. Um, great. And the last question is Central America, but more specifically, I want to focus on the Northern Triangle. The situation there is dire and complicated. In your opinion, what can the international community do to help alleviate poverty, violence, and most importantly, perhaps, what can the international community do to help create opportunities? Uh, the international community, of course, can support uh, the uh, programs and the plans. Uh, and I will say that probably the most important issue to be attended by the international community has to do with the corresponsibility in the issue of organized crime. Uh, because we won't be able uh, to overcome this very complex problem if we do not implement a kind of integral approach to the issue. That means that the international community has also been able to attend the problems of drug consumption. Uh, they have been able to approach not only through uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, reactive policies, but also uh, through more you know, I integrated uh, policies. Great. Thank you very much. This has been a great cafe con former president of Costa Rica, Laura Chinchilla Miranda. Please stay tuned on the LATAM channel. Muchísimas gracias. Muchas gracias. Ha sido un gusto.